Hello. I made a video last year where I looked at this updated Flysky FSI6 transmitter. It's the FSI6X. It actually has a different type of processor in it. And one of the features touted for this was that you can use SBUS and you get eight channels of PPM. And I discovered to my delight that I could get those features, the uh, SBUS output and eight channels of PPM, with the good old FSI A6B receiver. And I was very happy to see that because I have a dozen of these, literally, probably more than 12 actually these days. Um, and I didn't think too much more about it until recently when I struck a problem, quite a bit of confusion, when I found that I had a couple of these that did not do that. So that is, they only ever gave me six channels of PPM output. And when I tried to get SBUS by the menu on here, let's have a look at that. Um, so you would go to, I'm not going to focus, RX setup, output mode. So this is where you select uh, PPM or PWM. Um, this is for the channel one output. And then over here, this is the IBUS or SBUS selection. I have it set to PPM and SBUS at the moment. Uh, so you need the X transmitter to do this, of course. Uh, this menu is not on the ordinary FSI 6. Um, but yeah, I found that no matter what I set in that IBUS or SBUS selection, I would only ever get IBUS out of this IBUS uh, labeled as servo there. And I thought that's uh, a bit strange, but then I remembered something that somebody in the comments of that video last year had said and they said it could be something to do with the firmware on these so I looked around a bit and I discovered that you can actually get different firmware versions on these and the newer firmware will give you the SBUS and the older firmware will not and for some reason the newer receivers that I bought came with the older firmware which is why I was confused anyway so I discovered a way that you can quite easily flash the newer firmware on so that you can get SBUS on all of your receivers so I thought I'd just have a quick look at that. Um, before I, what I wanted to do at the beginning of this video is show you a before and after, but unfortunately the two receivers that I've already done this flashing for turned out to be the only two that needed to do it, and I don't think I have any more with the old firmware on. So I'll just show you what you should be seeing if you have the new firmware. And what we're looking at here on the scope is the PPM pulses, and we look in there. Um, we should see it goes down and up nine times, so that gives you eight PPM channels. And if you're looking at the old firmware, you'll only ever see six, or well, seven down and ups. And if we look at the, uh, let's run that again. All right, so now we're looking at the, this is S bus, and I know that because it's idle low, and then it comes up to do the pulses there. And if I set this over here to be, uh, if I set this, we'll see it changes to, oh, I'll just stop that there. Well, you can see it's idle high. This is IBUS. So this is what you should be seeing. You should be seeing that able to change. And just before we look at the GitHub project page, I will point out that you will need to have one of these or something that can do the equivalent job because this is not a job for the Arduino IDE. I should also mention that I'll be doing this on Linux, not Windows or anything else. Anyway, here is the GitHub page where I found the firmwares and you can find them in here. I'll just click on there and show you uh, IA6B version 1.6. That's the one you want. And it's pretty well described by this guy. Big thank you to POVLHP for making this available. I'm not sure how these people figure this stuff out, but they are very smart. So IA6B version 1.6. So firmware with 8-channel PPM output. First has 6 channels only. Uh, he doesn't mention anything about SBUS, but as I mentioned, I have confirmed that this firmware will give you SBUS when the previous one didn't. Um... So download and install ST-Link driver. This is for Windows, I'm presuming, and ST-Link utility. Uh, on Linux, I used this. I'll put a link to this in the description too. I don't actually recall where I got this from, whether I built it from source or whether I got it from one of these other links, but you can see there are some repositories for a good number of Linux installations there, and there's also uh, Windows. Well, this is a, an open source version of ST-Link, so you can get a different one for Windows if you so, so desire, and Mac, you can find it there. Um, and it's pretty simple, really. You open up your receiver, and 
you need to supply it with ground and power so you can just use the normal outside pins of the uh, board for that and then you're going to need to connect up to the clock and data pads um, now I found that was not enough I also had to connect the reset lines as well so here's the inside of the IA6B receiver uh, normally you would not have this little yellow wire here that's just something I was messing around with last year so don't expect to see that but you should expect to see these pads down here labeled reset clock and data and they don't have solder on them to begin with uh, I just put a little blob of solder there for what I'm about to do next but uh, so reset goes to reset although I would suggest try it perhaps without this first so from what I was reading on the github page you're not supposed to need this but I did need it so anyway reset to reset uh, clock goes to clock and then data goes to this one here data IO maybe that not sure what that stands for and conveniently the ST-Link module also has a ground which you will need and a 5 volts there so I'm just going to connect the ground and 5 volts into these normal ground and 5 volts pins there okay there's my three connections soldered on there okay it's a bit fiddly but I think they will be okay and now you can just power this by plugging it into USB with a bit of luck that light will still come on <laughs> haven't broken anything yet so if you're doing this on Linux you're probably going to be doing it on the command line like this um, so I have downloaded the file that I will be flashing to the receiver but before we do that it's kind of advisable to figure out what the ID of this receiver is because if you just by some chance give more than one receiver the same ID you might not be able to use them at the same time or your transmitter will bind to both of them or something like that you could have some weird problems uh, if you're only ever using one at a time it wouldn't matter but you know just just since it's quite easy let's first read the the uh, what do you call it flash memory of this thing and have a look at what the hex address is and just in case this sounds a bit complicated it's actually mentioned here as well so making a backup uh, is a better way to call it isn't it um, so now this is the way you would do it if you're using the ST link utility on Windows but I'll just show you what I did on Linux which worked quite well uh, I just put it in this notes file so that I could get through this a bit quicker so command will be something like ST flash read and then a file that you want to put it into and then the starting address and uh, I just picked this number up from looking at some forums on the net um, and I don't really know what it is but <laughs> it works <laughs> so a, I think it's a number of bytes to read but uh, actually no I don't know what it is because it reads more than that number of bytes anyway this works and it changing this to a number up to about 32,000 or so didn't even make any difference anyway uh, now this hyphen hyphen reset option here that may also not be necessary um, but I'm using that because I saw this also recommended on forums where people were having the same problem I had and that was when you don't use the reset wire uh, it says device type not recognized or something like that and people were saying to use this option and this also gave me the hint to perhaps also use the reset wire uh, this option on its own did not work by the way I, ha I did actually have to connect the wire Anyway, so this uh, command will let me read um, the memory and it will put it into a file for me, provided I'm root user. You might not need to be root user on your system, but I do on mine. Uh, let me try that again. Alright, so it read this file called backup bin, um, that's only going to be accessible. A second, <laughs> just have to make that readable by me so that I can have a look at it. And I'm going to have a look at it with a hex editor over here. And now we'll go back to the um, GitHub page again. Now, uh, open it in a hex editor and change the four bytes at offset 1c00 which will be one two three four five six seven eight when you first download it so let's have a look at that um, so I'll just go page down a lot till we get to address one C zero zero so this 
these four bytes here, when you first download that file, uh, sorry, when you first download this file from the GitHub page, these four bytes will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's not a good idea to leave them like that. Um, but what I've just opened up here is my backup. So these are the four bytes that were in my receiver's memory to begin with. So E9AB9041 is what I should put into this one before I write it to the receiver. Um, so I think I've already done that. Let me just open this file and see what is on here. Can I do that? Yep. Uh, so again, we'll look down there. I actually did this for two receivers last night, so it might not be the same. Okay, it's a little bit different, but you can see that this four bytes here, actually the fourth byte's the same, isn't it? Four, one. So whatever that four bytes is in your backup, set that here, and you won't have any conflicts or um, problems with using or binding to multiple receivers at the same time. And then you would save that file. So then to write this to your receiver, all you need to do is, uh, so you're going to do the same thing, st flash reset, this time you're going to do write, and then the 1.6 firmware, and then again the same uh, starting address. And that's it. So we just do that, paste. It takes a little bit longer to write it. Flash written and verified. Oh, that's funny. When I did this yesterday, I noticed that the LED, you see that there? The LED would go into a very fast flashing mode, which was the waiting for a bind mode, which was quite convenient because I could just turn my transmitter on and bind it immediately. Oh, bind is this one. Okay. Let me get my shit together. Okay, bind is that part. Right. Okay, so that's what I saw yesterday immediately after it finished flashing. So, don't know why it didn't do it now, but. Um, you can see here it says uh, flash written and verified jolly good. So that's the main thing. As long as you see that, it should be all right. Uh, let's turn this on. Oh, we're supposed to be binding, aren't we? Okay, and bound, and everything is good to go. Actually, I just realized I wrote that flash, uh, flash that stuff on there without changing those four bytes. So I'm going to have to do that again now, but <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, so hope that was informative and helpful for somebody out there. Thanks for watching.